How durable is this and what happens if you need to repair it? On the line with us from iFixit.com, our great sponsor, Evan Nerona. Hello, Evan. Hey, guys. How's it going? He's got a disassembled Nintendo Switch in front of him. You are a brave man. You could say that. <laughs> are you going to be able to put it back together and play with it? Um, I will definitely be able to put it back together. Some things might not work, but generally it came apart pretty easily, okay. so I expect it's going to go back together pretty easily as well. How hard was it to take it apart, and what did it take? Um, it was actually fairly straightforward. It scored an 8 out of 10 on our, repair, on our repairability scale, um, and that's because there was very little adhesive. 8 out dealing. of 10? That's extremely that's high. Good, yeah. Way wow. higher than I expected. Um, yeah, our most recent iPhones actually scored 7 out of 10, so that definitely says something about the Switch. Yeah. So you could take it apart with a, is that a regular screwdriver or do you need a special head? Um, most of them are regular screws. All the external screws, though, are Nintendo's infamous uh, tri-point screws. Ah, so there's okay. lobes instead of four on them. Okay. And it's interesting because those are the same security screws that Apple's now using inside their iPhone. Uh, I presume you so, have that head in your iFixit kits, right? Yep, I came prepared. It's right here. Yeah, yeah. We, we love those iFixit kits because, uh, in fact, I, that's what we gave all our hosts for Christmas because we know they're taking awesome. things like this apart. Yeah, I missed out on that. I know. Next year. <laughs> next year. Well, uh, I've got a few questions. You know, in this in this teardown, what did you learn about the Switch that you didn't know before? I'm specifically thinking about this Bluetooth controller. The the Joy Cons and the and extra controllers connect via Bluetooth, but yet the Switch won't connect to Bluetooth wireless headphones, which is just driving me nuts. Yeah, that's a really interesting feature, and I would really hope that they can fix that with um, a software update, like an over-the-air update, because it does have a Broadcom Bluetooth chip that should be able to support that functionality. Um, it seems like maybe they just didn't address that in the first iteration, but as you guys know, there's other issues as well that we we're hoping Nintendo is addressing. Well, like this left Joy-Con problem, what's going on there? Um, so there's a couple different theories right now. To give your viewers some background, um, people are saying they're having connectivity issues with their left Joy-Con. And while some people can walk 30 feet away and use it with no problem, other people are saying within five feet, it just conks out. Hmm. Um, there's two main theories behind this. People are saying that A, it's being caused by the size and location of the antenna, which seems okay at first. Um, um, if you compare the two Joy-Cons, I have the left one right here, the blue one. And then I have the right one, which is kind of disassembled. The key difference being that um, the right Joy-Con has its own... Ex um, separate antenna that enables NFC, but the left antenna is ah. actually built into the board right here. Mm, mm, mm. And people are saying just the size and location is causing connectivity issues, but I think Nintendo engineered it a little bit better than that. Um, there's a second theory is if we stop on this picture right here, you'll see a little solder blob on the left Joy-Con, which is unfortunately on the right in this image. <laughs> But um, people are saying that it might not be properly applied or there's some cases where the quality control wasn't tight enough. Oh, so the soldering got in the way is, is one theory. Where's the solder blob? It's on the blue uh, part on the it, right? It's on the blue Joy-Con if you look below and to the right of the analog stick. Okay. Oh, um, I see the yeah, solder blob. Right, yeah. 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 Big, so, big old um, silvery thing. You think that might be blocking the antenna? I don't think it's blocking it. I think um, we spoke to some folks at Creative Electron, and they said that sometimes if there's like a last minute change or some nth hour addition, they'll actually leave open spaces on the board to add in like filters to the RF system. So it's possible that instead of putting a component there, they just close that connection with the solder blob. Ah. And it's possible that in some cases it was not fully connected. So is this the sort of thing that you know, Nintendo hasn't quite come out and acknowledged that this is a problem. They have said that they're looking into it and that, you know, hopefully they'll they'll find some fixes if there are issues. But clearly, there's a lot of folks on the internet talking about this. So does this look like the sort of thing that could be fixed easily in future hardware versions? Or, or are we just all kind of SOL here? Because I, I haven't experienced it personally, but a lot of folks are complaining about this. I I would really hope so. You know, um, there's a, um, a YouTuber out there who actually went ahead and fixed it on his own by actually soldering a separate antenna onto that solder blob. <laughs> oh wow, wow! That's and, um, that's something most people aren't going to do, <laughs> right? Yeah. But so, it worked, yeah, which is interesting. Issue. So that My solder blob concern. is covering up a probably, in your opinion, covering up a connector that was left no, um, there for a, adding something. Yeah, or it's just closing a connection that would have otherwise they right, may have open. pulled out a component or they may have thought about putting a component that they're actually not using. So maybe they will put an antenna in there in future versions or interesting. Maybe. 
Yeah. Interesting. How about the dock? You you discovered that it's really just a USB-C hub with an HDMI port. You could buy one of those. It's basically just a cheap piece of plastic, right? I mean, yeah. for, if, you, so, if you got it included, no big deal, but people are going to buy these on the aftermarket if they didn't or they break it for $90. Yeah, they're, they're pretty pricey. Yeah, especially if you want to set up with more than one TV in your home, that you're looking at, it's going to add up pretty quickly. But essentially the entire dock is this board right here, which is home to two USB um, ports, um, USB-C, and the HDMI out. That's all it is. It's a board this big. Everything else is just plastic. Could I go to Monoprice and get a USB-C to HDMI adapter? Would that work? Um, it's possible. I haven't tried it out myself. Unless they put firmware in to block it or you know, some Something sort of like that. handshaking Which they very well might stuff, have just right. to, you yeah. know. But there's no performance advantages that the dock adds or anything like that. No extra processing power or nothing. No, I don't believe so. In fact, um, before the Switch was actually released, I was reading online about rumors and patents, and people were saying there would at least be a fan or some sort of cooling inside the dock, but there's nothing. nothing. This is the internal of the, of the dock. Wow. It's just that. It's a plastic thing. Plastic Man. thing, and then this little spring-loaded I do want to do, somebody's USB got a mod ports. where they put uh, some felt on the inside there, so it doesn't scratch the screen. <laughs> yeah. I do like that idea. That might be a good mod. That's probably pretty useful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how repairable? You said 8 out of 10. That's pretty good. Yeah. That means if something breaks, people will be able to bring it somewhere or do it themselves. Yeah, ideally they'll do it themselves. But, you know, um, we want to be sure people who are doing these repairs have access to parts, have the right tools on hand, and instructions so they can do it correctly. How is the part situation? Is Nintendo offering parts to third-party um, repair? As of today, no, not really. Okay. Um we can wait and see. Obviously, when a new device comes out, it takes time for parts to proliferate throughout the market. Right. But I imagine in the case with other popular consumer electronics, we will start seeing parts appear. Does most especially for devices repairable as this one? Does most of the components do they they look like off the shelf parts, or is there a lot of a lot of custom things here? I guess you know how 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 uh, much do, are we going to have to rely on Nintendo for that? Um, I unfortunately I'd say a lot of these are pretty specific components made for the Switch. Um, right off the bat, the batteries are obviously um, custom made by Nintendo and custom designed, and those are components that you're going to have to change after two years. Um, the fan might be off the shelf, the speakers might be off the shelf. The, I'm looking at this cartridge reader and headphone jack, which is obviously a notoriously um, vulnerable component. Yep. That's probably going to be custom, and you're going to probably have to go out and source it Maybe, Carefully. though, after a while, there'll be some of these on eBay you can buy for parts. You never know, right? Hopefully, yeah. The these other thing people are worried people about, is, them. as we mentioned, is this, the dock scratching the screen. Is How hard is that going to be to get a replacement for? Um, I don't know. The digitizer, it's really hard to say. I've never seen a digitizer exactly like this, yeah. but it's a pretty... Digitizers are fairly generic components. Okay. It's interesting. They have these notches cut out at the bottom. And those actually serve a couple purposes. One, they're ports for the speakers, and two, they're actually air intake oh, for the kidding. thermal management. That's kind of yeah, smart. Yeah, we checked it out the that. other day. It's yeah. pretty. Uh, I will say the thermal management is pretty cleverly designed in this thing. So you can see there are these two notches on either side yeah. right here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's it's, interesting. So one of the things that Nintendo has going for it, and, and I think you know most most gamers know this, is their hardware just lasts and lasts and lasts forever. Like you can play an original. You know, Nintendo Entertainment System from 1985 today, in most cases it kind of works. You might have to blow in the cartridge or whatever, but it's going to work for you. Given that this is essentially a tablet, will this have that same longevity uh, or or not? Um, I really hope so. You know, um, a lot of the things that it relies on is just the HDMI standard sticking around and the batteries lasting. I'd say that's the two major ones. HDMI is obviously not going anywhere, or at least it will be backwards compatible for a long time. And as long as people have access to batteries to replace in their switches, I think I can see this com this console lasting five, maybe ten years. Twenty years might be a stretch, though, just because you know it is a digital device. That's great news. That's great news. Devices like this tend to follow Moore's law. How, how about the CPU? What's the CPU in there? Is that a stock CPU or is that a proprietary Nintendo? Um, it's Nvidia's. Um, it's a customized version of Nvidia's Tegra X1. Oh, interesting. It's the same. Same as in the Shield, which exactly. we're going to show in a little bit. Yeah. 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 So they, somebody so, said that this is really kind of almost a proprietary Shield tablet, in some respects. You, you could say that. I haven't done too much research into the Shield itself. It's but, interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, it is. Well, it's a good choice. It's a fast device, chip, right? It's a great. Yeah, chip. Nvidia yeah. It really seems to be on the cutting edge of yeah. a lot of stuff with mobile, you know, self-driving cars. I mean, they're they're a company that's that's making some waves, and it's kind of nice to see Nintendo actually 
you know, make a smart decision on that end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Evan, great to talk to you. Evan Narona is a technical writer at iFixit. Of course, iFixit is a sponsor of some of our shows. We love them, but we always like to get these teardowns on because I think you learn a lot when you look at what's oh, yeah. inside this stuff. You can read all about it at iFixit.com.